Hummerbird not only build fish finders and combination units, but we also have a full range of chart plotters. Tim, tell us a little bit about the one in front of you. Well, we've got the 785 here, Sean, and this is available both with an external and internal GPS receiver. All our GPS units come standard with an inbuilt uni map of Australia down to four nautical miles, which is 30 metres per pixel. We've got the Navionics card in there at the moment, so the uni map will actually give you this all this base mapping the whole way around Australia built in. So if we zoom out, we can see that we have really good coastal outlines but um, but no other information yeah. but with the optional navionics card you can actually push this in and then it'll it'll give us a lot of extra information on the screen so it'll give us all our beacons depth contours even if we press our information button we can go find the nearest port nearest tide station it'll give us the tide times for the area as well so it's a whole lot of information in one compact unit as well as this screen here Sean we just go through the screens by pressing the view button we've got if you are navigating towards a point we've got uh, or in a route we've got how long it'll be till the next point distance to go time it'll take you to get there and then if you're going to the end of the route it'll tell you how long till you get all through there um, also you've got the this screen here which will still give you all information when you're actually navigating on a, on a course and you've also got the compass bearing up the top here and as with uh, you've got your GPS diagnostics view which will show you all the satellites are picking up. So this if you're getting a weak signal you can actually look at this screen here and, and, re and see what's going on up in the sky and why maybe you are dropping out or losing signal. That's right and also it's a really good screen to have if you're thinking of mounting the antenna on the boat and you're not sure if it's going to pick up all the satellites you can put it there put this screen on say not nah, move it somewhere else oh look i'm picking up a lot more here yeah. i'll get a lot better view of the sky and yeah. a lot more accurate readings by pressing the view button again we've got our bird's eye view and basically what that is is a 360 degree view of the boat but you're actually looking down behind it and you can see all the marker buoys and everything like that so if you're actually navigating to an area with your highway screen this is the screen I like to use. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier. The boat's always going up the page and the, the map actually scrolls around. As you can see, the map's scrolling around now. So the map scrolls around you, so it's a lot easier to navigate to a point. And if you see a waypoint you want to go to, well, it's easy just to turn the boat that direction. So hit the view button again. We're back to our, our bird's eye view with the information if you're navigating towards a point. And the last view again is our chart view. Beautiful. With the Navionics cards as well, it's also, especially up the east coast of Australia, there's a lot of green zones and things like that now, and that, they'll be shown on your Navionics card, so you know exactly where you can and can't go, and avoid a fine if you uh, do manage to go into the wrong area. So Tim, we want to set up a course around this island. Just show us how easy that is to do. Well, it's really simple, Sean. Basically, our main control pad is this cursor button up the top here, and I'll just arrow through, ensuring that I'm going through all the correct channels, and I'll press go to on that first one. And then from there, just use that cursor pad again, set it up along, ensuring that I'm sticking into all the channels there. Press go to again, and then I'll do that all the way around the island. So down there, go to. I think there'll be about six or seven marks in here. Go to, and then back to our start point again. So six marks in the, in the route to do it. Go to again. And basically, now to go to that waypoint, I like to go into the bird's eye view, which by pressing the view button here, it'll show me here, and I'll just follow that yellow line to go. And down the bottom corner here, it's going to show me the distance to my next waypoint, how long it'll take me to get there at this speed. I can also go back and have a look on this screen as well, and it's going to show me the distance to go for the whole route and how long it'll take me to get there at the speed I'm going. Well, we're not going to go at this speed because that'll take us all day, so uh, let's get it up on the plane and get to that first waypoint. All right, mate, let's go. I've just come in off the plane now and basically you've got this 30 metre arrival alarm around the first waypoint. So once I hit that arrival alarm, an audible alarm will sound, it'll cancel that bit of navigation I'm going to now and then put a new track in to go to the next waypoint. So as we're coming in here, as soon as we get within 30 metres of that waypoint, as you can see here we're 55 metres away now. So as soon as we hit that 30 metres, we're going to have an alarm sound. So just about now as we're crossing it, you'll have that alarm sound, which is the arrival alarm, and it's going to automatically start navigation to the next waypoint for us. So I can see waypoint one I'm going over now. It's got to spin the boat around the left a bit, head towards the next waypoint, which is about 6.9 kilometres away, and I've got about 17 to 18 k's to go in the track. 
Have you ever been out fishing with your mates at your favourite fishing spot overnight, woken up in the morning and your anchor's pulled a couple of hundred metres? Well, all Humminbird GPS units have got the function for you. It's the drift alarm, and basically all you've got to do is press the menu button twice, go down to your drift alarm here. Once you're anchored up for the night time, you can choose to set that for 10, 20, 30, all the way up to 1,000 metres. Press the exit button out of there and zoom in here. So then, at night time, if your anchor pulls and you drift outside of this red circle here, you'll have an audible alarm go off. So you can wake up, re-anchor, and get home safely. The Humminbird chart plotters, like all Humminbird units, have a very easy to use menu system and button configuration here. Basically, to scroll through the different screens, we press the view button, and that'll take us through all the different screens we've got here on the chart plotter. And if we go past our favourite screen, all we've got to do is press the exit button, and it'll take us the reverse way through that menu. Once we're on the screen we want to be onto, we can use our zoom buttons to either zoom in or out, depending on how much information you want or how much area you want to cover. Then we've got our cursor arrow here, and basically our cursor arrow we can use to navigate through our menu systems, but also we can use it to move ahead if we want to mark a waypoint or go to an area, use our cursor button, press mark to mark the waypoint, and go to if we want to actually navigate towards that area. We've also got the information button here, and basically what that is used for, if we're back here, we press the info button, it'll give us the choice of the nearest port, tide station, and current station. Also, the information button can be used for, say, if we're out fishing at night time, and we can see a beacon over here, we can use our cursor arrow to get right on top of that beacon, press the information button, it's going to tell you that it's a red beacon, it's got a flashing light with a period of three seconds. So at night time, you can know exactly which beacons are what, and it'll give you all that information with the push of a button. To get back from that, we press the exit button, and back to where we are, press the exit button again. If you found that fishing spot with uh, you know, a whole heap of big fish on it, maybe a bait fish ball, and you want to mark a waypoint directly, all you've got to do is press the mark button, and that'll save that waypoint in there permanently until you choose to delete it. All our GPS systems and fish finders that are capable of taking GPS antennas have this unique track mark here. This basically is a breadcrumb trail of where we've been for the day. So if you're leaving a narrow creek or channel area, you can just follow that line back and it'll take you exactly over the same ground that you left on that day. Also, if you've been out fishing with your mates and you've just drifted over a patch of really good fish, you can actually follow that trail back up and drew that drift again, which will help you catch a lot more fish in the long run. Okay, when you look at this GPS screen here and we're travelling to a waypoint now, you're going to have a lot of abbreviations on the screen. What these actually stand for is, we've basically got next, which is the next waypoint that we're going to, which is waypoint one. TTG is time to go at our current speed. DTG is the distance to go. The uh, latitude and longitude are shown of where we currently are at. Cross track error is how far we are off our yellow highway map. So how far we are off the direct course to that point and SOG is speed over ground. So that's our current speed over the ground at this time. Also we've got here is the end. So we're actually traveling a route now, which is, we've got a four waypoints into it. So to waypoint four, it's 2.3 or 2.03 kilometers away, which is distance to go. Again, time will be 32 minutes going at this speed. We've got today's time, which is 8.23 a.m. We've got the bearing that we've got to get to that point showing on the screen and the bearing that we're currently going at, which is called COG, course over ground. So to get to our waypoint one up here now, we've got to go on a bearing of 175 degrees. At the moment, we're going at 173 degrees. So I know I've got to spin the boat around to the right a little bit to head on that right bearing. With our go-to button here, we've got the function of man overboard. If you press that down and hold it for one and a half seconds, it's going to have a man overboard function. And by zooming in here, you can see it'll give you a little man showing there, but you, it'll also give you your latitude and longitude here. So if you need to call Air Sea Rescue for them to come out and help, you've got that showing on the screen there. And it's also gonna put a target around that immediate function so you know how to navigate and get back to it and get on top of that person. We've also got down here, which is your power on and off button. If you press that one, it, it'll give you a light. So at night time, you can increase and decrease your light. Also at daytime on this screen, and with all colour units, you've got the choice of background colours. At daytime, the white screen here is the easiest to see. If it's an overcast day or, or just first light or last light, the blue screen's pretty good. But definitely at night time, the black screen's really good. Especially if you're navigating somewhere, that white screen's really bright in your face. And if you look away from the unit, you're going to see stars and not be able to focus on what's out there. With the black screen, you can put the black screen on 
and the, the light right down, which is almost impossible to read in the daylight now, that'll still be bright and easy enough to navigate through at night time.